respected audience assalamu alaikum i am professor shamsud jaman professor of pathology i welcome all in today's 25th lecture on pathology today day 2 of tissue renewal that is day 2 of healing and repair Today's topic Granulation Tissue Complications of Wound Healing Factors influencing wound healing. There are dense to this topic granulation tissue, complications of wound healing, and factors influencing wound healing. Respected audience, in Day 1 lecture on tissue renewal, I have told you about cutaneous wound healing and healing of fracture of bone and I have told you the wound is healed by granulation tissue. Now come to what is granulation tissue. newly formed mesenchymal tissue composed of proliferating fibroblast newly formed epilaries ground substances and a few chronic inflammatory cells like lymphocytes. So Granulation tissue is newly from mesenchymal tissue composed of proliferating fibroblast, newly formed capillaries, ground substances, a few chronic inflammatory cells like lymphocyte is called granulation tissue. Gradients have told you if this is a wound, cutaneous wound, and this is the margin of wound, and this is the subdermal tissue. Fibroblast proliferated here, and this fibroblast synthesizes the collagen fibers. And from the existing blood vessels, there is formation of new capillaries, new blood vessels and this is called neovascularization and from mesenchymal tissue there is synthesis of ground substances and there is infiltration of some lymphocytes that are T lymphocytes although these are chronic inflammatory cells these cells helps in synthesis of collagen helps in proliferation of blood vessels by producing lymphokines now come to what is the role of granulation tissue.
this tissue helps in healing and repair now come to what is the criteria or characteristics of granulation tissue Characteristics of granulation tissue. I mean, how a surgeon can recognize the granulation tissue? How a surgeon can recognize granulation tissue? Pink in color. It is pink color. Soft and velvety. It is granular and it bleeds to dust. So these are the characteristics of granulation tissue and by these characteristics surgeon can recognize granulation tissue. The color is pink, soft and velvety consistency, granular appearance and bleed to dust. Why? Glancy tissue bleeds to dust. Why it bleeds to dust? Because there is neovascularization and the new capillaries is with no complete vessel wall is with no complete basement membrane due to incomplete vessel wall or incomplete basement membrane of the newly formed capillaries it bleeds to dust due to incomplete vascular wall of newly formed capillaries it bleeds to dust now come to complications of wound healing Non union, non union. There may be no healing or no union among the two own margins. There are so many causes of non union. It may be due to presence of foreign bodies, it may be due to malignancy, malunion. There is healing, but malpositions of the margins infection dear audience we know reaction of vascularized living tissue to local injurious agent is called inflammation if inflammation is caused by microorganism then that inflammation is called infection exuberant granulation tissue formation what it means it means excessive granulation tissue formation it means excessive granulation tissue Formation and it is also called it is also called proud flesh. So exuberant granulation means excessive granulation tissue formation. It is also called proud flesh. If excessive granulation is formed in the wound, why it is complication? 
this excessive glandular tissue may lead to hypertrophic scar it may lead to also painful scar burst of wound it is also called wound dehiscence wound dehiscence what are the causes of wound dehiscence one is if laparotomy is done this wound may burst due to increased or raised intra abdominal pressure so raised intra abdominal pressure following laparotomy following laparotomy if there is raised intra abdominal pressure there is chance of wound dehiscence another is infection of the wound another is inadequate granulation tissue formation inadequate granulation tissue formation respected audience i have told you granulation tissue helps in healing if there is inadequate glandular tissue formation there may be chance of wound dehiscence weak scar formation hypertrophic scar formation keloid epidermal inclusion cyst so these are the different types of complications of wound healing i have told you here hypertrophic scar what is it it is a raised scar within the wound margin a raised scar within the wound margin is called hypertrophic scar dear audience if this is the wound and this is the skin if the scar is raised here after healing and raised scar and it is within the wound margin then it is called hypertrophic scar I have told you here keloid. Now come to what is keloid? Raised tumor like tumor like mass due to excessive. collagen beyond the on margin is called keloid so it is raised tumor like mass and the mass is beyond the on margin not within the on margin like hypertrophic scar rather it is beyond the on margin and it is due to 
excessive collagen. So if this is the wound, like this wound, the skin, if due to excessive collagen tissue, this is the raised tumor like mass and the mass not within the own margin rather it is beyond the own margin this is called keloid keloid it is a complication it is a complication of own healing it is genetically predisposed it is genetically predisposed as it is genetically predisposed after excision it can recur it recurs following excision why it recurs because it is genetically predisposed now come to common sites of keloid formation One is sternum, another is face and air level. These are the common sets of keloid. So this is all about the complications of wound healing. Now come to factors influencing wound healing. Dear audience, there are some factors that may enhance wound healing and there are some factors that may delay wound healing. And the factors is divided into two. One is local factor, another is systemic factors. One is local factors and systemic factors. First come to local factors. Size of wound. Site of wound. Infection. Mechanical factors, foreign body in wound. These are the local factors that may influence wound healing. First, come to the size of wound. A smaller size, a smaller size of own faster healing, and larger size of own delays healing. So, if the size of own is smaller, it will be healed earlier. It will be healed. First, site of wound. Wound in face. Wound. 
own in face heals faster than own in leg. Why? Why own in face heals faster than own in leg? Because of high vascularity in upper part than the lower part. Because of high vascularity in face than in leg. Then infection. Infection in wound delays healing. Wound delays healing. Then mechanical factors. Motion in wound. Motion in wound delays healing. Why motion in wound delays healing? Because if motion in the wound, there will be compression of the blood vessels and there will be separation of the wound margin. So it will delays healing. Why? Why motion in wound delays? Because motion causes compression of vessels in wound. Again, motion causes separation of own margin. Separation of own margins. So motion causes compression of vessels in own margin in own. Motion causes separation of own margins. So there is dealing of own healing. Foreign bodies. Foreign bodies in own like suicide material. Like any bone piece, this may cause delays healing. So these are the local factors that may influence wound healing. Now come to systemic factors. Age, anemia, nutrition, vitamin deficiencies, metabolic disease, hormones. So is nutrition, anemia, vitamin deficiency, metabolic disease, hormones, these may influence own healing. First come to AIDS. Own in early AIDS faster healing than own in all AIDS. Own in early is 
faster healing than in old age. Why? Why there is dealing of old healing in older age? In older age, in older age, there is atherosclerosis. Respected audience, you know, in atherosclerosis, there is hardening and loss of elasticity of the vascular wall. And atherosclerosis usually occurs in old age. As there is loss of elasticity, diminished blood flow. Diminished blood flow in tissue. As diminished blood flow, so there will be delayed wound healing. Delayed wound healing. Now come to anemia. Respected audience, we know reduction of hemoglobin per unit volume of blood below the normal level as per age and sex is called anemia. In anemia, there is reduction of hemoglobin. Reduction of hemoglobin in blood and you know hemoglobin carries oxygen in tissue so decreased carrying of oxygen in tissue as decreased carrying of oxygen in tissue there will be delayed healing. Now come to nutrition. Nutrition is associated with wound healing. If there is deficiency in nutrition, wound healing will be delayed. Now come to vitamin deficiencies. Vitamin C is associated with synthesis of collagen by fibroblast. If there is deficiency of vitamin C, deficiency of vitamin C, decreased collagen synthesis by fibroblast. As collagen is one of the component of granulation tissue, so there will be decreased granulation tissue. As the decreased granulation tissue, wound healing will be delayed. Delayed wound healing. So vitamin deficiency delays wound healing. Now come to vitamin A. Vitamin A deficiency delays wound healing. How? Dear audience, you know vitamin A is associated with normal epithelialization. As there is vitamin A deficiency, there will be inadequate, inadequate epithelialization. As inadequate epithelialization, there will be delayed wound healing. Now come to metabolic disease.
metabolic disease like diabetes mellitus like diabetes mellitus if anybody suffers from diabetes mellitus there will be delaying of wound healing delays wound healing why delays wound healing in diabetes mellitus in diabetes mellitus there is immunosuppression and in diabetes mellitus there is every chance of infection so there is delays wound healing now come to hormone hormone corticosteroid application of corticosteroid delays wound healing how how corticosteroid delays wound healing dear audience if this is on you know in 24 hours there is inflammation and inflammation is mandatory for wound healing inflammation is important step in wound healing if anybody applies corticosteroid it acts as anti-inflammatory agent due to anti-inflammatory action of corticosteroid there will be dealing of wound healing how anti-inflammatory actions of corticosteroid is carried out corticosteroid inhibits cyclone oxygen is pathway of arachidonic acid metabolism their audience do know arachidonic acid is metabolized by two pathways one is cyclooxygenase pathway another is lipooxygenase pathway what happens with the pathway there is production of chemical mediators of inflammation if anybody applies corticosteroid in inhibits the blue cyclooxygenase pathway of arachidonic acid metabolism so there will be no production of chemical mediators and there will be no inflammation so no inflammation and inflammation is one of the steps of own healing and as there is no inflammation due to application of corticosteroid so there will be dealing of own healing so delayed own healing so this is all about the systemic factors that influences own healing dear audience today i have told you about granulation tissue it is newly from mesenchymal tissue composed of proliferating fibroblast newly from capillaries growing substance and few chronic inflammatory cells like lymphocyte. It helps in wound healing. It is velvety and soft, granular, pink color, and brick to tars. I have told you about the complications of wound healing malunion, non union, infection, wound dehiscence, fraud flesh, painful scar, weak scar, hypertrophic scar. Right. Lastly, I have told you factors influencing wound healing. There are two factors, local factors and systemic factors. Today, after this, thanks all.